Hi, this is Roger from Kanka Labs with a, another issue of our M Show videos, what every maker should have one of. Now, last time we had this uh, dual uh, thermocouple thermometer, handy, cheap, and very useful in the lab, especially for measuring temperatures at uh, semiconductors. Um, but there is a, another kind of a thermometer that is quite handy in the lab and that is these um, infrared um, thermometers. Um, most of us can't afford an infrared camera like from FLIR or Fluke um, but uh, the second best thing is one of these um, infrared thermometers. So let me in short explain how these infrared thermometers work and what's important when you are using it, what you should watch out for, what you can measure and what you can't. Now you might know that every um, physical body um, that is hotter than absolute zero or zero Kelvin emits uh, thermal radiation and the maximum, the peak um, energy uh, is emitted at a certain wavelength that is uh, proportional to the temperature. Now let's take for example our sun. The sun has a surface temperature around 6000 Kelvin and it emits uh, its uh, maximum energy in the yellow-green light at a wavelength of around 0.5 micron. Now uh, ambient temperature here at uh, let's say 23 degrees Celsius or let's see how hot it is here 22.3. Um, at ambient temperature um, we have a temperature, if we express it in Kelvin, it's around 300 Kelvin. Now 300 Kelvin is uh, 1 20th of the temperature of the Sun and so the maximum wavelength uh, or the wavelength of maximum uh, radiation is 20 times greater than at our Sun and 20 times 0.5 micron gives us around something around 10 micron. So 10 micrometer is uh, the wavelength where uh, bodies at ambient temperatures uh, emit their maximum energy and that means that uh, we now have a semiconductor sensor which is sensitive to this so-called thermal radiation in the range between let's say 7 microns and 12 or 13 microns. And now you cannot focus thermal radiation with normal glass. Uh, you must use a lens made out of uh, thermal uh, um, transparent uh, materials and that is for example germanium which you might know from germanium transistors or diodes in the, in the first days of uh, semiconductor uh, elements, um, but germanium is also a material used in thermal imaging and as you can see this is certainly not usual uh, glass, it's, it's really germanium, there are uh, of course other materials and this lens focuses um, just as your camera lens, uh, not visible light but infrared light and thermal infrared light onto the sensor which lies in the, f uh, which is placed in the focus of the lens. So um, there is another way um, uh, w which you can see here at this uh, cheaper one. I, I don't know if you can really see here at the center is, uh, is not a classical uh, lens but a so-called Fresnel lens. It even looks like it's made out of uh, plastic, so apparently there are some uh, kind of plastics which are also transparent to infrared radiation or thermal infrared. And um, uh, you can also focus uh, light with a so-called Fresnel lens. So that's how these things work. 
uh, they simply measure the amount of energy in the focus with a special semiconductor that reacts to uh, with a uh, with a photocurrent to uh, to photons uh, in in the re range of 10 micrometers, and so that that's how they work. It's uh, really a a kind of a miracle that you can measure temperature without uh, touching your object, like with this, these uh, contact thermometers, with these thermocouple thermometers. Um, you just uh, measure the thermal light from, let's call it light, uh, the thermal radiation from your body, and then uh, you get the temperature displayed. Now, that's the theory. Now let's take a closer look what it's what is important when you use th such uh, thermal infrared thermometers uh, in the lab. Now the most important thing is how big your so-called spot size is, because well we have a lens which focuses the light, and as with your uh, camera lens, you of course have a certain angle. Uh, where your light is focused from, and depending on the distance to your measurement object, uh, you usually get a uh, printed uh, diagram where you can read how large your measurement spot size is depending on the distance. Now, for this uh, cheap one here, which we uh, have in our shop, um, I don't know if you can read it, but it says uh, distance to spot size is 12 to 1. And we try to find a, an affordable uh, infrared thermometer with a as big ratio as possible. This one here is my personal one. It even has a, a ratio of uh, 20 to, uh, to 1, but this is much more expensive. So the best we could get uh, at an affordable price is a ratio of uh, spot size to distance of 12 to 1. Well, 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 what does this uh, mean or what does this transfer to in reality? For example, if you are 30 centimeters or 300 millimeters away from your measured surface, the spot size is 38 millimeter. So we'll um, in a minute make an experiment. We certainly cannot measure the temperature at the tip of the solar ion, simply because it's too small, um, the spot size is much larger and it only could take the average of the temperature of the uh, solar tip plus the surrounding ambient air. And that, of course, does not give us a reading or a measurement as we want it. So we cannot measure the temperature of the of a small object like a solar tip with uh, such a um, thermal infrared thermometer. So if you go further away, uh, then uh, the uh, spot size becomes bigger and bigger. For example, if you're uh, 1,500 millimeters, which is 1.5 meters away, uh, your spot measurement area or spot size is even 132 millimeter um, in diameter. And it also, you, you might uh, suspect from the graphics here that if you put um, your, uh, your device that you want to measure the temperature directly in front of it, then you could measure uh, the temperature correctly. Well, that's not the case because the spot size can never get smaller than the diameter of the focusing lens. For example, here on this one, uh, it says that the spot size has a minimum of uh, 13 millimeters. So that's, I've measured it, it's exactly the diameter of the lens. So the spot size is at minimum the lens diameter. It cannot get any smaller. And this uh, graphics here, this diagram is a little bit more 
are correct. It says the spot size remains up to a distance of 140 millimeter. It remains 13 millimeter in diame diameter and only then starts to increase linearly with a distance. So, um, just for an example, we try to measure the temperature of the uh, solder tip, which I set to 200 degrees Celsius. And let's see what we get. We only get 67.4 degrees. So, uh, that's simply because we measure a mix or an average between the area of the solder tip plus the ambient air. So be aware you cannot measure small spot sizes. For that you either need a contact thermometer like this one or an expensive thermal infrared camera. The second thing you have to watch out for, most of these are thermal infrared th camera uh, thermometers they do have a little laser inside just to aid in aiming uh, the device, but there is an effect called parallax. You can see that the laser diode is um, around one or two centimeters above the, centi the, the uh, center of the focusing lens. And that way, um, let's take an example and we try to find the maximum of the temperature that is that we measure by aiming the laser spot exactly onto the solder tip we get 30 degree and now we move it away and we will see we get now higher temperatures and the maximum is at a now we get 120 which is nearly half of the true temperature now it starts to decline again so, uh, when trying uh, to find the, uh, the true measurement point, uh, you cannot do this with the laser pointer when you're measuring very near. You can do this, let's say, it's, it becomes more or less exact at distances one meter away or larger, but not when you're measuring, measuring only a few centimeters away from your test object. Yeah, you see it again. Let's try to find the maximum. So that is around here. Now we have the hottest point of the uh, solder tip focused. I've moved it a little bit. Let's try to find again. Now here was the hottest point and the laser spot is is uh, just uh, quite far away from the true maximum. So it's better just to scan around a little bit, uh, slowly scanning and trying to find the hottest point um, and not relying on the laser pointer. So that was the, th the second thing. And there's still one important last thing to know about. So one important thing you should know if you look at the display of my more expensive ProScan 510, uh, you can see here below there is um, a symbol Epsilon which stands for or is the symbol for the so-called emissivity and that is Epsilon equals 0.95. Now what is that? Um, such a thermal infrared thermometer basically assumes that the uh, surface of your measured um, device or measured object is a so-called blackbody radiator. A perfect blackbody radiator would have a, an emissivity of exactly one, but most real materials are having emissivities near to 0.95 um, and this is uh, fixed uh, here in this cheaper one which we have in our uh, shop. Uh, it doesn't display it but you can read it from the manual. It does have an, a fixed emissivity of 0.95. 
Here in the more expensive types you can set the emissivity to any value and there is one important um, metal that has an emissivity quite far away from 0.95 and that is aluminium, polished aluminium. So if you try to measure polished aluminium or blank aluminium uh, without any anodizing, um, then you should be very careful that um, you either correct your measured temperature or uh, you set, if possible, the emissivity to the emissivity of aluminium. Um, so that, that is something you have to watch out for when measuring blank um, polished aluminium. Black anodized aluminium has again an emissivity near uh, 0.95. So uh, when you're measuring heat sinks, they usually uh, are black anodized, so there is uh, no problem with them. But when measuring blank um, polished aluminium, be aware that they, you, you could measure a uh, false temperature. So, and now finally, let's take a look at the functions of the uh, cheaper thermal uh, infrared thermometer we have in our shop. We already could see we have this handy laser spot in front. You measure it by pulling the trigger here. And as long as you pull the trigger, you get a constant uh, display update. If you release it, then it goes into hold mode and shows the last temperature. And the three uh, buttons here are simply switching off the backlight, uh, changing from degrees Celsius to degrees Fahrenheit, and turning off the laser if you don't need it or if there are persons around which uh, could be harmed by the laser. So these are the only functional elements and the most important is the trigger switch. It is operated with uh, two AAA batteries. Let's see uh, how to get it open. Yeah, pulling here. Yeah, you see two simple batteries. So cheap, handy, relatively exact. It's around 1.5 degrees Celsius. Uh, that's uh, quite good. Uh, some years ago you would pay uh, several hundred uh, euros or dollars uh, for such a device now. They are uh, uh, 10, 20, uh, in the range between 10 and 20 um, euros or dollars. So quite cheap and quite handy and every maker should have one of these for a lot of uh, measurement purposes and situations. So that was it for today with this nice little uh, thermal infrared thermometer and thanks for watching. Until next time, bye from Roger, bye from Kanka Labs.